Welcome to day 24 of the Course in Mastery. Today, Tom Wood is going to talk about personal financial management, and then CPA and attorney Sandy Botkin will show you how to maximize your tax benefits. Here's Tom. At one point in my life, I was $75,000 in debt. I had no income, no prospects, no friends, and seemingly no future. I was not the person to come to about personal financial management. However, since that time, I have completely erased my debt, earned millions of dollars, and developed a strategy for wealth that anybody can follow. There are four simple steps, four principles, that if you master, you'll have all your money taken care of. Number one, finances are a discipline. It's a lot like brushing your teeth. It's not something you may want to do. However, you need to do it. If you don't brush your teeth, your breath stinks. Same thing with your financial position in life. If you don't stay on top of your finances every day, your income, your wealth, is not going to be very strong. Number two, money is just a symbol. Recognize this, that money is a symbol for the value you've created in the marketplace. It doesn't have any good or bad meaning to it at all. It's what you give it. The way I look at money is that the more money I create, the more value I've created in the marketplace. In order for me to be rich, I've got to help a lot of people. Once you understand this, your blocks about being rich start to dwindle and disappear. You've got to understand the incredible power you can have in helping people if you have money. Number three, pay yourself first. Now when I first heard this principle, I didn't really understand it. Here's how it makes a lot of sense to me. At the end of every month, you have to pay your credit card company, and you may not like paying them, but you do it. You may have to pay your utility bill, and you may not like paying them, but you do. The first person you have to pay is yourself. You may not like giving that money to your bank account, but you need to do it. So if it's a choice this month between Disneyland or paying yourself, you pay yourself. Now once that money's in your bank account, you need to take that money and reduce your debt or increase your income. Reduce your debt or increase your income. That does not mean going to Disney World. I hope you understand that. Pay yourself to increase your income or decrease your debt. Number four, you must study and master money. Even if you hate it, you've got to study and master money. Now, unlike brushing your teeth, the more you study, the more you do study and master money, the better you get at it. What you need is a continuous program where you have access to information about money. Hey, that's Mastery TV. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Sandy Botkin is a CPA and attorney, as well as a former trainer of IRS attorneys, who now spends his time helping people maximize their tax benefits. In today's clip, he explains that there are two tax systems in the United States, one for employees and one for business owners, and why being a business owner gives you a huge financial advantage in life. Here's Sandy. Why most Americans overpay their taxes to the tune of thousands. There are three major myths that's creating this. Myth number one is, well, I only made $50,000 or $30,000 a year. Why do I need to know about taxes? Because if what I say generates a loss in your business, and we're assuming it's a bona fide business, that loss can be used against any form of income you have. Interest, dividends, wages, rents, anything. If the loss exceeds your income, you can carry back all business losses two years and get a refund from the federal and state government for the last two years of taxes that you pay, or carry forward all business losses, get this, 20 years and offset the next 20 years of earnings. So you never lose a properly documented business deduction as long as you run your business like a business. But there's a bigger myth than that. And that myth is that my accountant takes care of my taxes or my spouse takes care of my taxes. Nothing can be further from the truth. I equate that with a doctor taking care of our body. Wouldn't it be great if we can eat all the fattening foods we want and once a year we go to a doctor's office and we get one of these rotor rooter jobs? My favorite myth is my mechanic takes care of my car. Those of you who have ever owned an older Jaguar would appreciate that myth. In fact, Jaguars are the only cars made in the world that have more vertical mileage than horizontal. It is very critical that you get your tax affairs in order. 
Now, the case study on this, which really emphasized this point, involved a study in 1994 by Jane Bryan Quinn, who's a nationally syndicated columnist. And she did a study of a couple who made $40,000 a year. Now, $40,000 did not go far enough, so the husband said, Honey, you got to go out and get a job. And she did. And she made an extra $18,000. A year later, they saw no difference in their bank account. Why is that? Well, this slide will show exactly what the problem is. On that $18,000, they have $5,660 of federal and state income tax, most of which is non-deductible. Well, this slide will show exactly what the problem is. On that $18,000, they have $5,660 of federal and state income tax, most of which is non-deductible. On that $18,000, they have to pay Social Security of 7.65% or $1,377. And as visual proof, look at your paycheck. That's exactly what it is. They then have car expenses. We assume they commute 10 miles a day, round trip, very conservative. At the IRS 37.5 cents a mile rate, that's $975 of commuting, which is non-deductible. They then have child care of $100 a week for three kids. I'm not quite sure where you get child care for $100 a week. You get a little bit of a tax credit, but basically that's $85 a week net of that credit which is $4,400 a year of non-deductible child care. And I'm making this specific so you'll see why in a minute. Then you have lunches at work. Don't you have lunches with colleagues? We assume they spend $6 a day, five days a week. So that's $30 a week, 50 weeks a year of non-deductible lunches. Then uh, better clothing. You know, when you're working, you have better dry cleaning, more clothing. That's at least $1,200 more of upkeep. And finally, since both couples are working, do you think they want to cook? No, they want to eat out more. And their eating out costs have gone up by $1,600. By the time you take your non-deductible federal and state income tax, non-deductible child care, non-deductible Social Security increase in food costs and clothing, you're left with $1,268 a year on $18,000. Now, let me put that in perspective. That's $100 a month to put up with 2,000 hours of work and to put up with a commute and to put up with a boss that is spelled backwards double SLB. The reason is that we have two tax systems in this country. And a lot of people think, sure, one for rich, one for poor. No, there's one for employees, which is designed to take your wealth, and you're taxed on dollar one. And then there's one for self-employed individuals, which are taxed on your net. This is after you take all your deductions, which is designed to create economic growth. In fact, small business generates over 70% of the job growth in this country. It's not IBM. It's not United. It's small business. People like you and I. So when lobbyists come to Washington, D.C. to get some good tax laws, and there are good tax laws, that's the important point. You, they can get what they want because they know they're the economic engine behind this economy. The key is you've got to have the knowledge. You've got to know what you're doing because if you don't know, you can't take the deductions. That's it for today. Tomorrow we'll discuss why you are either sabotaging your success or on a consistent path toward creating your dream life. We'll see you tomorrow.